You are listening to The Thought Leaders Show with the world's cutting edge hottest innovators, influencers, and impact makers today. If you are looking for inspiration and motivation, listen in. Welcome to The Thought Leaders Show. Now, here's your host. Hi, this is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really excited to introduce today's guest, Deborah Matthew, MD. Dr. Matthew Deborah is on a mission to restore her patient's health by addressing the root cause of their symptoms instead of treating diseases with drugs. She was inspired when she experienced a life-changing transformation after years of suffering with exhaustion and irritability that prevented her from being the wife, mother, and doctor that she wanted to be. Using bioidentical hormone therapy, she helps others regain their energy, libido, mood, and memory. Dr. Matthew is a leader in this field of medicine and has lectured on bioidentical hormones around the world. She's been featured on television, radio, magazines, and in the book, The Evolution of Medicine. More importantly, she loves her work and the fact that she not only helps her patients feel normal again, but also helps save careers and marriages. Her best-selling book, This Is Not Normal, A Busy Woman's Guide to Symptoms of Hormone Imbalance, is now available. Welcome, Dr. Matthew. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. This is really a a very hot topic, I think, today, because how many people have you ever heard who, who, like, all of a sudden realize they're not who they thought they were, they're angry, they're cranky, they're mean, and they have all of these other issues, and like you said, their careers, their family, their marriages could really suffer the consequences. So tell me a little bit more about who you help. Yes. Yeah, so I help people who know that they don't feel great. They know that they're just not themselves. They know that something is wrong, but oftentimes they don't know exactly what the problem is. A lot of these people have already been to their doctor. They've already complained that they're not sleeping or they're, they're really moody or they don't have energy and they've had some tests done. Maybe their thyroid was checked. They're, they're not anemic. And the doctor says, everything is fine. You're normal. And that's great, but they still don't feel good. So they don't have a solution. And we have solutions. We have lots of things that we can do to help people restore their wellness and feel great again It's just a matter of getting the information out so that they know that there is help available. So I've had this happen to me where I've gone to the doctor and they say, oh, it's probably just, you know, the the normal signs of aging and everything. And of course, they send you away either with nothing or with a lot of questions unanswered. So when people come to you, you I think you just said uh, many of them have already been to other doctors. What would you say are their the, the biggest issues or problems that they're, they're having when they finally come to you? Yeah. So depending on the age of the person, we see the same sort of symptoms over and over and over again. So a lot of people are tired. They have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning. They kind of have to drag themselves out of bed and it takes a little bit to get them going. A lot of people have a dip in energy in the afternoon so that they kind of have that little crash and burn two, three, four in the afternoon and they're looking for caffeine or sugar or something just to get them through to supper. And then ironically, some of those same people get a second wind late at night. So now 10, 11 o'clock, Their brain is going and they're getting stuff done, but then they have a hard time falling asleep. And then another really common one is that they're just not able to sleep soundly through the night. They're waking up, they're tossing and turning. And so, of course, then when they wake up in the morning, they don't feel refreshed. 
So those are really common things that we see. Other really common ones are mood symptoms. So whether it's feeling more anxious or sort of depressed, just kind of flat, unmotivated, just not really looking forward to all the things that they used to really enjoy. And often we feel more negative, critical, impatient, easily frustrated, just irritable, cranky, moody. And we know sometimes that we're not really quite as nice as we typically are, but we just can't help it because we just feel so darn irritated. Um, Bloating and stomach symptoms are another really common thing that people complain about, whether it's constipation or loose stools or just that bloated, indigestion, heartburn, just kind of not right. And that really makes you feel uncomfortable when your stomach doesn't feel good. A a lot of people complain about uh, inability to lose weight and um, lack of sex drive as well, that they've just lost interest and they're just not enjoying it anymore. So it kind of sounds just like the blahs, (laughs) you know, and, and it's funny because we're all bombarded with the um, the magazines on the newsstand where every week there's a different um, cure for all those symptoms that you just described because I, I'm, I'm one of those people that I'll buy those women's magazines because it'll say, lose 20 pounds, or it'll say the cure for fatigue or all this stuff, and then you read it and it's one little detail, and then I'm going, isn't it interesting how there can be so many issues that have all the same symptoms. And I imagine you get a lot of people are going, look, I've tried everything. So what is it that you bring to the table that that is so different than, say, the average doctor out there that only gives you, you know, you walk in and you've been waiting for two and a half hours and they see you for five minutes. What makes you a little different? So when you go see, you know, doctor and you've waited a long time and they really only have a few minutes to spend with you, what ends up happening typically is either you're reassured that it's normal, it's aging, it's stress, and so sort of nothing is offered, or you get offered a prescription or two. So you might be offered birth control pills if if there's sort of if it changes with your menstrual cycle, you might be offered a sleeping pill or an antidepressant. And the problem is that these prescriptions are kind of trying to put a band-aid on your symptoms, but they're not really getting to the root of what was causing the problem and fixing that. So that's what I do. I work to evaluate your unique physiology. We know that we're all different on the inside biochemically, just like they'll look different on the outside. So what we want to do is we want to understand what's working well on your insides and which parts aren't really working properly so that we can correct those underlying root problems that are the cause of the symptoms in the first place. And if we can correct the root problems, then your your symptoms go away, you feel great, you don't need the prescription medications, and you can get back to feeling like you again. You can just get back to feeling normal. So our hormones, I remember back in a long time ago, some doctor prescribed to me like Premarin for something, and this was, I was only, I was in my 40s, and I don't know, what is the difference between if you're talking to somebody about nutrition, natural supplements, and bioidentical hormones, are bioidentical hormones different than, say, um, Premarin? Again, I don't know. Or what is the difference of how you treat people versus uh, someone who's going to give you a prescription for some type of uh, pill? Sure. So there's kind of two parts to this. One is that there are prescription hormones that are readily available. They're covered by health insurance. Doctors, you know, have been prescribing them for a long time, but they're not actually an exact match for the hormones that our bodies are supposed to be making. Bioidentical hormones, that word bioidentical means that it's biologically identical. So it's an exact match for the hormones that our bodies are supposed to be making. We can get bioidentical hormones from regular pharmacies covered by your health insurance. So uh, we can also get them from specialty pharmacies that prepare them just for you. But we get, we, we have more ability to get 
proper balance when we're working with hormones that are a natural match for women, as opposed to if we're working with synthetic chemicals that are trying to mimic our hormones, but they're not an exact match. The other side of this, besides just what kind of hormone we're using is the approach to how we do it. So how we were trained back in medical school is if you are perimenopausal, meaning like leading up to menopause and you're having menstrual problems and mood problems, you don't feel good, we give you birth control pills. If you are postmenopausal, then we give you Premarin, typically, which is the pill that um, it it's derived from the urine of horses, and so some of so it's natural in the sense that it comes from nature. But the kinds of estrogens that are in the pill aren't all natural to a woman's body. Um, so we give you a prescription just because you're menopausal, but we're not really looking at what your natural hormone balance is. So not every woman who goes through menopause needs estrogen. Maybe what you really need is testosterone, or maybe there are other hormones that are out of balance. So this approach, this we call this functional medicine, where we're looking at how your body is functioning. What we would start with is we would start with a comprehensive evaluation of what's going on. We would look at what your hormone levels are to determine which ones are out of balance, and then we know which ones we need to address, and then we would address them with the natural form of the hormones, the bioidentical form of the hormones, so that we can just get you back to being balanced and back to feeling like yourself again. Wow. So so functional medicine, and for many people listening, they may not have heard of functional medicine because I knew... I know for me personally, until a few weeks ago when I met you, when we were both speaking at the Harvard Faculty Club, that I didn't even know what functional medicine was. And so can you give a a little definition, um, repeat that a little bit, just so that people can understand the difference between functional medicine and traditional Western medicine? Sure. So functional medicine is kind of common sense is what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand what the root cause of the symptom is, and then we want to resolve the root cause of the symptom so that the symptom goes away. And so we're constantly asking the question, why? In in medical school, the way that we are trained to do it is more that we're asking the question, what? So somebody comes in and they're having whatever symptoms. And so we want to make a diagnosis. So the diagnosis might be anxiety or insomnia or constipation, but we want, we're not really asking the question why our next question is simply what is the best prescription for this? And we open up our little book and we look at our list of drugs that we could pick from. And so if it's insomnia, we prescribe a sleeping pill. And if it's, you know, constipation, we prescribe a stool softener, but we're not really thinking about the underlying cause of the symptom in the first place. So functional medicine is root cause resolution. We are looking for the underlying reasons that are causing your symptoms and helping to restore wellness so that you can get back to feeling like you again without the prescription medications in most cases. So what are some of the reasons that uh, when, let's say people find you, but what is what are the issues that that somebody might not do this type of um, medical alternative to going to a traditional doctor? Uh, are is functional medicine covered by insurance or is it um, considered out there? It sounds really logical to me because right. of, to go like, well, let's find out the root cause of why you're feeling like this and fix the cause, not just mask the symptoms, which like you said, I think a lot of times that's what doctors do. And you talked about having different um, lab work or blood work. So uh, can you kind of describe maybe what, what, what the process might be and what somebody might expect to, and how long even it might take to figure all this stuff out? Sure. So most functional medicine practitioners, including myself, do not participate with insurance. And the reason is that insurance companies dictate what doctors can and cannot do, what they will and will not cover. And so it's not possible to work with an insurance company 
confined because I wouldn't be able to do what I need to do. I would be able to write prescriptions just like all of the other doctors. So when people come to see a functional medicine doctor, what they're doing is they are investing in their health with the expectation that they're going to get a great return on investment in the future by being able to avoid chronic diseases and prescription medications and emergency room visits and, and poor quality of life and missed days of work, et cetera. So um, it is not covered by health insurance. But the way that I, I um, explain it to people is if you think about your house insurance or your car insurance, they typically don't pay for routine maintenance, right? If your paint is peeling on your house or if your brake pads are worn on your car, your car insurance and your house insurance aren't going to pay for those things. Those are routine maintenance. So if your house burns down, then your insurance kicks in. Or if your brakes completely fail and you smash up your car, then your car insurance kicks in. So health insurance is kind of the same way. It's kind of a misnomer because really your health insurance is disease insurance. So you need it because if something horrible happens, if you are in a car wreck and you, you know, got internal bleeding or something horrible is going on, you really need your health insurance. But health insurance is just not as good at paying for routine maintenance, right? Like your sneakers and your gym membership and things like that. So this is routine maintenance. This is keeping you well. So it's really important not to wait until the brakes fail. You want to change those brake pads way ahead of time to keep yourself safe. Um, a lot of the lab work that we do, however, can be covered by health insurance. It depends on the person and the symptoms. Sometimes the labs that we do are outside of insurance, but this is always a conversation that we have with everybody. So the first thing that, that I do when somebody comes in to see me is I ask them, all kinds of questions about their history and how they're feeling. And even before they come in the door, we have them fill out a whole big long questionnaire of paperwork so that I already have a pretty good idea of what's going on. So that when I start asking my questions, I've got the big picture and now I can fill in all the little gaps and all the details. So I want to know as much as possible so that I can determine how I think I can help that person, but also I want to be able to help that person understand what I think is going wrong. What are the kinds of things that I think are causing their symptoms and, and what can be done about it? So then we can have a conversation about what do they need to expect in terms of their financial investment? How soon do I think they're going to feel better? And, you know, what kinds of um, results I think we're going to be able to get for them so that they know going in exactly what to expect and they can determine if this seems to be the right fit for them. So do you find that very many people, when you talk about hormone replacement or uh, bioidentical hormone replacement, do you, do you find that a lot of people have preconceived notions about what that means? Yeah, so hormones, unfortunately, um, got a bad name. When I was in medical school, what we were trained is that all women who go through menopause should go on hormone replacement for their own good because it was going to protect their heart and their brain and their bones. And then we did a great big study that tried to prove that hormone replacement was going to protect women. And in fact, what we found out is that for some women, there was an increase in the risk for breast cancer and that we weren't protecting them from heart attacks the way we thought. And so overnight, hormone replacement went from everybody should be on it for their own good to something that was dangerous that should be avoided at all costs. And that was that study came out in 2001. It was called the Women's Health Initiative Study. It made a ton of media, but we've had over 15 years now to go back and really understand the study and the research. And what we saw was that the women in the study who were given just Prem, which is the one that you had, these were women who um, had a hysterectomy. They were given Premarin those women did not have an increase in the risk for breast cancer. And they in fact had a trend towards a reduction in plaque in their blood vessels. And the women who were better at remembering to take their pill every day had the least amount of plaque compared with the ones that sometimes forgot their pills. There was a second group of women in the study who still had their uterus and those women were given the Premarin and they were given an, um, in the same pill, another drug that was trying to copy progesterone. So estrogen and progesterone are the two hormones that change when we go through menopause. But instead of giving real progesterone, this was a drug 
that's a, a man-made chemical that was trying to mimic progesterone. And unfortunately, while that one works exactly the same as progesterone on the uterine lining, it doesn't work the same in the rest of the body. So progesterone typically is breast protective, but when we gave the synthetic chemical, not only was it not breast protective, but in fact, it resulted in an increase in the risk for breast cancer. So we understand that it was this specific form of hormone replacement pill that was associated with an increase in the risk for breast cancer. We've got lots of other studies that also show this same risk. But if you are given estrogen without that drug, there is it does not have the same risk. And if we give you estrogen with the bioidentical form of progesterone, we don't see an increase in the risk for breast cancer. So there are different forms of hormone replacement available and which type of hormone replacement you get has different risks associated with it. So what we need is we need a full conversation to understand for any individual person, what is their risk? What is their family history? What are their lifestyle habits? What's going on in their body? We need to understand what their risks are. We need to understand the risks of the different forms of hormone replacement that are out there. And that way we can make the best choice for that individual person because the hormones have tremendous benefits. And what's been in the news has been so much about the negatives, which was from that one particular pill, that we, we seem to have forgotten about all of the positive benefits from hormone replacement. So another thing that we know now is that if we start hormone replacement soon, right around the time of menopause, especially at least within 10 years of menopause, then we get some of the good preventive benefits of the hormones. Whereas if we start hormone replacement more than 10 years after menopause, the hormones can't go backwards and erase the, the health declines that have happened in the meantime. And the risks of hormone replacement seem to go up a little bit if we start it later. So in that big study that we did, the average age of the women was 70, but the average age of menopause is 52. So we were taking older women, giving them hormone replacement, expecting to prevent heart disease and things like that. And we found out that 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 wasn't really the best way to do it. It didn't really work that way. But we know so much more now than we did then. And now we can do a much better job. We can measure the hormones and make sure that we're only replacing the hormones that a woman needs. We can use bioidentical hormones, which is an exact match for what a woman's body would be making. When they are bioidentical, that means we can measure your hormone levels to make sure that we're giving you an appropriate dose and not over or under dosing. And we couldn't measure when we were using the synthetic hormones because there's just no lab test for those chemicals in our system. And then we can also be very careful to watch for side effects because before we just used a one size fits all approach. We just gave everybody the same pill for some women it worked great. Some women it didn't really help them and some women they had all kinds of side effects. But now we're really careful about watching. You should just feel normal. You shouldn't have side effects. If you're having side effects, it means it's the wrong dose for you and we need to change something. So we have all kinds of things that we can do now to do a much better job for women than the way that we were doing it before. Wow. I'm, I'm listening to this and I'm just thinking about how what, the way you just explained it, it and functional medicine and how you work with, with a person as an individual, because I think it's really important that everyone understand that the reality of life is we each have to take responsibility for our own health and our wellness. And it's really good to know that just listening to how things have changed since that study was done and how you look at each individual person measure and find out what's best for them and then follow that person so that they can feel normal again. And being normal, uh, obviously, that would be different for every person because, uh, of, you know, all kinds of factors, like even where we live, because I live in a very hot climate. So me feeling normal in Florida is a different feeling than when I'm in Oregon. I mean, it can be that type of um, things that, that affect us. So I really am enjoying all of this information. So you recently wrote a, a best-selling book. It's called, This Is Not Normal. 
A Busy Woman's Guide to the Symptoms of Hormone Imbalance. What is covered in that book? So in that book, what I do is I go through each of the different hormones and talk about how you might feel if you have a problem. So we talk about too much estrogen, which is actually something that women can experience in the years leading into menopause, and then not enough estrogen, which happens after menopause. So leading into menopause, a lot of times women feel anxious and irritable and they have night sweats and and, um, they can't sleep properly and their menstrual cycles get all out of whack. So heavier periods and periods coming more frequently. So they're having the PMS more often and, and it lasts for longer and it's much more significant. And then after menopause, Women can feel much more fatigued. Um, They still may not be sleeping well. They can feel kind of flat mood, sort of a little depressed. And one of the things, and of course, the hot flashes and and, um, vaginal dryness so that intercourse becomes very uncomfortable sometimes and they lose interest. Um, And one of the most prominent things that I think women experience when their estrogen levels drop is that their brain just doesn't work properly anymore because estrogen is so important for brain function, for energy, for sleep, for mood, for memory. And so they're just not thinking straight. It affects their relationships in their families. It affects their ability to do their job at work. I mean, you have to be on the ball and remember what's going on if you're going to be successful at work. So that's one of the most distressing things because, of course, if your memory is not working, the first thing we think is, oh, my goodness, I think I'm getting Alzheimer's, right? And it probably is not Alzheimer's. And it is correctable if we can restore hormonal balance. So we talk about estrogen and the different symptoms. And there's quizzes that you can take to see, you know, whether it seems like it would be an issue for you. We also talk about progesterone, which is the one that is commonly an issue for women premenopausally. And this can be a problem in teenagers. It can be a problem in um, women of any age who are under a lot of stress. It causes PMS. It causes uh, menstrual irregularities, heavy periods, um, anxiety, insomnia, all kinds of things. We also talk about testosterone because testosterone, we normally think of that as the male hormone, but women have testosterone too, and we need it. It gives us confidence and motivation and self-esteem and assertiveness. It keeps our muscles and our bones strong. It works with estrogen to preserve our memory. And then, of course, it's important for everything to do with sex, interest, um, vaginal lubrication, ability to become aroused. Another hormone to talk about is thyroid, and this is one that... One of the most common things that I hear people when they walk in the door, the most common thing I hear when somebody walks in the door is, I just don't feel like myself and I just want to feel normal again. But the second most common thing that I hear people say is, I was sure that there had to be something wrong with my thyroid, but my doctor tested it and it was normal. So there are a ton of symptoms that are associated with thyroid problems. And oftentimes our routine standard screening lab tests miss some subtle thyroid problems. And if we do a more comprehensive evaluation, we can pick this up and we can correct it. So some of the common symptoms of low thyroid function are fatigue, gaining weight, or really struggling to be able to lose weight, constipation, dry skin, hair falling out depression or anxiety or irritability, decreased libido, bloating, constipation, feeling cold, losing the outer third of your eyebrows. There's all kinds of symptoms. And you can see a lot of these symptoms overlap. So sometimes it's hard to pinpoint exactly which hormone it is. So in the book, there's all the quizzes that you can take to help figure it out. And one more really important hormone that is the most impo- the, the most common hormone where I find a problem is the one that most people have no idea that they should even be thinking about and the one that doctors don't measure, and that's cortisol. So cortisol is your stress hormone. And when you're under stress, it's supposed to go up to help you cope with stress. But if you've had chronic stress, which you know most of us have some chronic stress, Cortisol levels can go too high. And when cortisol is too high, it makes you gain weight. It pushes you to diabetes and dementia and osteoporosis and depression and anxiety and high blood pressure and insomnia and all kinds of horrible things. In a nutshell, high cortisol ages you prematurely. And then what's even worse is cortisol levels can fall inappropriately. So now you don't have enough cortisol to help you cope with stress. And that's when you feel 
exhausted and overwhelmed and every little thing feels like such a big stressful thing, even if it's really not such a big deal. So it becomes so much harder to cope with stress. And we see a really typical pattern here, which is that it just gets really hard to get out of bed in the morning. And the reason is that cortisol fluctuates over a 24 hour period of time. So it's supposed to rise in the early hours of the morning and it's Cortisol is like long acting adrenaline. So it's like you get this little tiny adrenaline rush in the morning. So your eyes pop open and you leap out of bed ready to start your day. But if your cortisol levels aren't really going up very much in the morning, then you press snooze a bunch of times. You drag yourself out of bed and over to the coffee pot because caffeine raises our cortisol levels in our brain a little bit so that our brain can wake up and we can function a little bit better. And then another common thing that happens is mid-afternoon, we get that slump. And so people with adrenal problems get a really significant slump, like they really just love to go lie down and have a quick nap. And then ironically, there's oftentimes that second wind late in the evening, now they can't fall asleep and they don't sleep well through the night. So cortisol is the most common one that I find a problem with. It regulates a lot of things. It regulates the other hormones, it regulates your sleep-wake cycle, it regulates immune system function, your blood sugar, your blood pressure. So all kinds of things can go wrong when cortisol is a problem. And we don't have a drug to fix this. So since there's no drug to fix it, doctors don't measure for it. And so nothing is done. It's not discussed. But there's so much that we can do to fix it. It's just that doesn't come from a prescription bottle. But if we can restore cortisol, oftentimes thyroid works better. Oftentimes we can get rid of perimenopausal symptoms or menopausal symptoms. And sometimes we don't even need hormone replacement therapy. And the younger a woman is, so if I have somebody coming in, for example, who's 25 and she's having all kinds of PMS and menstrual problems, et cetera, it's that much more likely that there's an underlying problem causing those menstrual issues and cortisol is often part of that equation. So you can go through, you can take the quiz, you can see, do you have symptoms of too much cortisol, not enough cortisol? And then for each chapter, for each hormone, there are some tips to understand a little bit more about what can you do? How do you have this conversation with your doctor? Um, how to know if your doctor's responding appropriately. So if your doctor poo poos it all away, then you know that that doctor is not going to be the right one to help you and you need to look for somebody who can. I think that's the key right there is to make sure that you find a doctor who understands these things and isn't just a textbook, um, I guess, like you said, a medical school person who goes by, okay, here's the you know, the pill that matches the symptom. Let's try that. Wow, you have so much information. So can you tell me where people can find out more about you and your services? Sure. So the website is signaturewellness.org. And there's lots of information on the website. Um, reading the book is a great idea. And the book is available on Amazon. And we have a link to that on the website as well. And um, we have some videos on the website and um, different uh, things that people can download to learn more about, um, you know, the way to, to find the resolution for the symptoms that they're having. Signaturewellness.org is, is yeah. where we can go. And I really, uh, when you were describing that your book and all the quizzes and everything, I'm going, I need to do that because I've had, you know, different situations where I know, I know there's something with my thyroid and the doctor always says, oh, you're within the normal range. <laughs> and I, and, and I read, I did research where I, where I saw there were two schools of thought on what normal range is. And then I learned a lot more when I found out that normal at age 25 may not be normal at age 50 on certain things because of how we grow and age and everything. And there are lots of other reasons too. So for example, if you have a problem with cortisol, cortisol regulates thyroid. So your thyroid gland can be doing a perfectly good job, but if there's a problem with your cortisol, then your cells can't use the thyroid hormone properly. And so your, your thyroid lab tests look okay, but you don't feel okay. Or if you are in perimenopause, 
and you are what we call estrogen dominant, meaning that your estrogen levels are still okay, but your progesterone has started to drop. This is really, really common. When you are estrogen dominant, then your thyroid hormone can't work as well. And if we can correct that, the thyroid hormone can work better. There's all kinds of examples. And you know, one more thing I'd like to say is that a prescription isn't really the full solution, even when it's a prescription for bioidentical hormones. What we really want to do is take a holistic approach to every person. So we want to consider hormonal balance, which is what we've been talking about today. We also want to consider nutritional status because you need the right nutrients to make your hormones and to generate energy in your cells, etc. You need to have proper gut function because if you have things like hidden food sensitivities or if you don't have enough of the good healthy probiotic bacteria in your gut, you can't digest and absorb your nutrients properly. And in fact, these underlying things are sometimes the cause of hormonal problems and environmental toxins are a huge problem. We're exposed to so many thousands of chemicals every day and a lot of them are endocrine disruptors, which means that they are causing problems with your hormones. And so, and, and your lifestyle habits are important. So I can help people balance their hormones and I can recommend vitamins and things like that. But if they're eating fast food three times a day, or smoking a pack of cigarettes a day or you know things like that there's only so much that I can do so part of this also has to do with having good lifestyle and the flip side of that is i see people who are yoga instructors and they eat nothing that's not organic and they you know have great lifestyle habits but sometimes that's not enough to compensate for some of the other factors that are going on so what we really need is we need a holistic approach where we are looking at all of these different factors in order to really restore wellness and get people feeling optimally healthy and really, you know, the quality of life that they deserve. Well, thank you, uh, doctor. It is really exciting to know that there are doctors out there who will actually, number one, talk to you and evaluate your symptoms and then take a look at these uh, different things that the average person doesn't know enough to ask. I think that's one of the keys is finding someone, a, a physician or a doctor who can actually work with you and who asks the questions, the should ask questions or answer the should ask questions that the average person, they don't have that, they don't know to ask. Like right. how many people would know to say, oh, by the way, doctor, you know, I'm really stressed out. Do you think that maybe we should check my cortisol um, levels? And unless the doctor knows all of these things, I wouldn't know to, to ask about, well, you know what, I, I, I think my thyroid's off, but I wouldn't know to say, well, do you think it could be affected because I'm under a lot of stress too? And, and that because we don't, the average person just isn't educated in that way. And we have to find people to help. So thank you so much. So signaturewellness.org, you can go there, connect with Dr. Deborah Matthew. And doctor, can people, um, you can work with people all over the world because of technology now. Is that accurate? We can. However, if someone needs a prescription for bioidentical hormones, then we do have to see them in person in order to be able to write a prescription. But what we can do is help them find somebody in their area that could help them out. Okay, great. Well, that's, that's great. You're, a, let's say, a font of information. <laughs> So thank you so much. Again, doctor, I really appreciate all the time you spent with me today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really am passionate about getting this information out to women. This is Tammy Patzer. Go make it a beautiful day. You've been listening to the Thought Leaders Show. To get all past shows and to get all future shows, go to thoughtleadersshow.com.